Tokyo Live. Tokyo Live and also P1. Welcome to Tokyo Live, live demonstration session for ESD Duodeno Neoplasia. My name is Peter Dragunov. I'm at the University of Florida. It is my pleasure to be moderating this session. I wanted to introduce Dr. Maheakata, and he will present the first lecture on water pressure method for Duodeno ESD. Thank you. Thank you for your introduction, Professor Dragunov. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tadatir Maihata uh, of St. Marian University School of Medicine. It is a great honor to make a presentation uh, here. Today, I'd like to talk about the water pressure method for duodenal ESD. So please share my video. Okay, let's start. As you already know, ESD provides local curative resection of precancerous regions and early stage gastrointestinal cancer with minimal invasiveness and functional preservation. Uh, compared to conventional EMR, ESD offers several major advantages, which increase the resection of large regions, lower local resection rate, and the superior curative uh, rate. This slide shows the difficulty level of ESD. Currently, the most difficult ESD is duodenal, followed by colon, esophagus, and stomach. Duodenal ESD is most difficult because intraprocedural perforation occurs more frequently than other gastrointestinal ESD. What are the differences between these difficulties? There are several reasons uh, for the te technical difficulty of duodenal ASD. The duodenum is far from the mouth and the narrow lumen. And this often limits the maneuverability of the endoscope and sometimes makes it difficult even across the region. Moreover, the duodenal wall is extremely thin and the perforation can easily occur. And because of narrow space in the submucosal area, it is difficult to insert the endoscope into the submucosal area. I believe that the key to the success or failure of ESD is slip into the uh, submucosal area. To overcome the, uh, this difficulty, Dr. Ihagi developed the water pressure method to facilitate the endoscope to go into the submucosal area by using the water jet function and the water immersion. They will also utilize the taper SD food. This schema shows the concept of the water pressure method. In case of uh, duodenal ACD, the scope submucosal area is difficult to visualize even through making a mucosal incision due to gravity. After filling the inside of the duodenal lumen with saline, the mucosal flap is floated by the broken pores. The water pressure using saline solution through a water jet channel further expands the mucosal space and improves visual visualization of the subcosal layer. This method makes it easier for the endoscope to penetrate the submucosal layer and allows treatment to be performed under, make, uh, under stable condition. Let me show you a video. As you can see, after making our initial mucosal incision, the submucosal layer is difficult to visualize. The after filling the inside of the lumen, the mucosal flap 
is plotted by the broken shift force. Water pressure using the water jet function further expands the mucosal incision line and improves visualization of the submucosal layer. We can dissect the submucosal layer while directly viewing the submucosa, which allows for a safe procedure. And finally, we can go into the submucosal layer and make our mucosal flap. It also improves visibility within the submucosal layer, such as the broad visas and the lateral edge. This method also improves visualization of the lateral edge of the dissection layer, which is normally difficult to visualize in the dissection plane. In the multivariate analysis, the water pressure method was associated with a significant decrease in intraprocedural perforation. Moreover, the water pressure method also was associated with a significant shortened procedure time. In closing, let me briefly summarize my key points. The water pressure method enables us to go into the submucosal layer more easily and quickly than the conventional method. The water pressure method enables us to avoid careless injury to the muscle layer or viscers by improving the visualization of the submucosal layer. As a result, the water pressure method reduces the interprocedural perforation risk and short-term procedure time. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. This was an excellent demonstration of the water pressure method. Uh, it seems very helpful for a very difficult situation in the duodeno. Well done. Thank you very much. Next, uh, I want to introduce Dr. Uh, Kato. Uh, who will present uh, a lecture on how to close a defect. Dr. Kato. Thank you, Professor Doraganov. Uh, my name is Motoh Kato from Keio University. Uh, first, uh, I would like to appreciate Professor Inoue for giving me this opportunity to have a lecture. Uh, my topic is uh, about how to close defect after duodenal ESD. I have no financial relationship to uh, this flows related to this lecture. It is known the ordinal ESD is at high risk of adverse events. Actually, in our institute, interprocedural perforation and bleeding was found in 15.5% and 5.2% of the ordinal ESD. In particular, uh, delayed perforation may result in serious out outcomes requiring highly invasive interventions such as a uh, FIPROS procedure. Therefore, prophylactic measure is important to avoid delayed adverse events. It is reported uh, that bar and pancreatic juice plays a crucial role for the development of delayed perforation. Therefore, uh, we try to close the mucosal defect. But uh, a large mucosal defect is difficult to close uh, using endoclips. So uh, uh, therefore, the prophylactic measure is important to avoid uh, the vast event for even larger mucosal defect after duodenal ESD. Uh, it is uh, so we uh, invented a closing method uh, using the clip with sling. So I'll show the actual procedure of uh, sling clip suturing method. 
This is a region of about 40 millimeters in the diameter in the descending duodenum. And after EST, then about 50 millimeter mucosa defect was created. And the first step of clip with swing method is deploy of clip on the story, uh, distal edge of the edge. And the first clip is deployed and uh, uh, capture the pro uh, proper mass layer as well as uh, the mass mucosa. This is important to approximate the large mucosa defect securely. And second clip is anchored on the opposite side uh, like this. After that, this, uh, this is the third clip uh, to uh, anchor the edge of the mucosa defect. Uh, the capture the uh, edge by playing the string. Then the uh, mucosa defect is approximated. Then additional clip is uh, deployed. And by pulling the sling, uh, you can change the direction of the endoscope. It is difficult to uh, close the clip when uh, you can see the target from the tangential approach. Then after that, we cut the sling using the scissors forceps. And sometimes we add the next clip with sling, like this. If you uh, clip uh, and approximate the mucosa defect, it is much easier to uh, add the clips. Finally, uh, we achieved complete closure for this uh, large mucosa defect. And uh, this patient uh, uh, discharged without any adverse event. We evaluated the proportion of the uh, delayed of the adverse event and found that the patient in whom the complete mucosa uh, closure was achieved. Uh, the delayed adverse event is only 1.7% and uh, it's much uh, lower than patient uh, with uh, unclosed and in, uh, incomplete closures. And it is important uh, not only to try to close the uh, defect, but also uh, actually uh, get the complete closure. Moreover, we analyzed the multivariate analysis and to uh, find the predictors, the delayed adverse event of the duodenal EST and find uh, complete closure uh, decreased about 95% decreased uh, of delayed adverse event. Uh, independently, the location and size and the circumference of the region. Furthermore, uh, sometimes we encountered such a large perforation during the procedure, but if we close the mucosa defect, uh, I mean, not only the population side, but also the four mucosa defect, uh, then uh, fasting period and hospitalization period and max, maximum CRP level is uh, not different from patient without population. So, uh, so if uh, it is important uh, to grow the mucosa defect, Uh, on the other hand, uh, sometimes there are cases uh, complete closure is difficult or even impossible. So uh, it is important to uh, prepare for this kind of patients. Uh, we performed multivariate analysis and uh, find uh, medial and anterior wall of the region uh, and the region size uh, larger lesion size is associated with uh, incomplete or uh, incomplete closure after EST. So uh, we should prepare for uh, such kind of lesions. 
uh, before the procedure. So this is the summary of my short lecture. Uh, swing clip suturing method can achieve complete closure for large mucosa defect after ESD. Complete closure significantly improved clinical outcomes, uh, including patients with perforation. The large lesion size and the anterior uh, medial wall is a risk uh, for incomplete closure. Thank you for uh, your kind, kind of attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kato. This was very helpful because indeed perforation is very much dreaded complication in the duodenum and can be potentially fatal. So this is very useful technique and thank you for the very clear demonstration. Thank you. Now I'm given an extremely difficult task. I'm supposed to introduce somebody who needs no introduction. So I will not even try, and I will just hand the podium to Professor Yahagi to show us his magic. No, he said, please. Uh, thank you, Peter, for your kind of introduction. And it is always great pleasure to join this wonderful event. Well, I would like to uh, share my experience, uh, such as very challenging uh, Dudina or ESD case. Uh, using water pressure method. Okay, I will show you my uh, video recorded ribocase. I'm going to perform the dinner ESD today, and I'm going to move the greatest therapeutic endoscope, which is GIF H290T. Uh, this endoscope has shorter bending part like this. It is very important to have this short bending part when we perform complicated urinary ESD because of the easier maneuverability and approachness to the target region. This is the major papilla. And as you can see here, this is our target region today. And this region is located at the posterior side of the upper second part of the duodenum. The region size will be uh, around uh, four centimeter in the longitudinal direction. And as you can see here, there is certain irregularity on the surface and some red, red, redness on the surface that's suggesting the uh, cancerous component within this region. I always spray indigo carmine uh, to enhance the surface structure. And we can recognize the irregularity of the surface furthermore by using indigo carmine. Uh, I would like to remove this entire lesion using water pressure method. Now I'm introducing cap attached endoscope uh, to the duodenum. Now we can see the target lesion. The maneuverability of the endoscope is really poor and unstable. Before starting actual procedure, we should uh, immerse the lumen with normal saline to utilize the power of water pressure. I will use grease oil solution together with small amount of indigo carmine. Indigo carmine is quite useful to visualize the submucosal layer. Open it, please, brush it. Puncture the mucosa carefully. Okay, injection, please. And gently pull back the needle. Then we can make a nice protrusion like this. Now, inner side of this region will lift it up uh, with the submucosal injection. And I always use 1.5 dual knife J, which has 1.5 millimeter metallic part. Carefully check the border of the target region. I can start the mucosal incision at the inner side. Gently touch to the uh, target mucosa, then press the foot pillow of the dry cut mode. I prefer to use dry cut uh, effect 2.0 uh, with uh, bio 3, then start mucosal incision by step stepping foot pedal intermittently. And of course, there is no interval for dry cut mode. Therefore, I have to step the foot pedal intermittently and check the incision line. 
And if there is some bleeding, we can easily stop it by tracing the same line using the coagulation current. Currently, I'm using six plug 3.0. And still, if there is bleeding, I can stop it by applying cross tip of their line. Fortunately, it's already stopped. This is the edge and catching the edge of the mucosal incision with the metallic tip of their knife and carefully extend the mucosal incision to the left side. The inner side is already nicely incised and I usually press the same line using swift coagulation to open the submucosal space a little bit. Now we can see the widely open submucosal layer here. It's good enough. Then extend the mucosal incision to the lateral side. Gently touch to the mucosa and make a small hole here and ask my assistant to give additional fluid cushion. Injection, please. Okay, stop. Now it's nicely lifted up. Then I can conduct mucosal incision from here. Again, using dry cut mode, I can gently control the endoscope to the light side by torquing my wrist to the light side. The movement of my wrist is minimal, but still I can control very well. This is the edge of the normal side. By hooking here, I can extend the polar incision to the oral side. We should be careful not to go deep uh, because when we make polar incision from inner side to oral side uh, by pulling back mana, it tends to go deep. Uh, therefore, we should be care careful not to go deep. And right after making the incision, we should press the same line to open the southern polar layer a little bit. And if there is bleeding, we can apply close tip of the knife. Close it, please. And switch the coagulation current to spray coag which is 1.2, it is usually good enough to stop bleeding. Now it's completely stopped. I would like to make a little bit more some of the fluid cushion here, injection please. And quickly start the mucosal incision from here. Continue mucosal incision to connect the incision line to the inner side. Now it's connected. Again, make a small hole here. Okay, injection. Okay. It is very important to mitigate water uh, pressure to visualize the lumen much clearly. Otherwise, it becomes dirty during the polar incision. Now I can connect the incision line at the lower side. It's completely connected. And in case of finding this kind of rich vascular network, I usually switch to the lower uh, host coagulation to operate this kind of sick blood vessels. Then put the uh, vascular network with the open tip of your knife and apply uh, 0.3 of post coag, which is usually good enough to coagulate this kind of vascular network. Now, vascular network already disappeared, then it's time to use the swift coag. Switching back to the swift coag and the injection phase. Okay, it becomes quite safe situation to the initial submucosal dissection. Now, uh, this is the final part of the mucosal incision at the oral side. I can put the edge of the remaining mucosa here and carefully 
conduct the mucosal incision and connect the incision line to the upper side. Okay, now it's connected. By using water pressure, we can easily open the submucosal state like this. Then touch the inner edge of the submucosal layer. I can easily open the submucosal state. As you can see here, uh, the approach to the target lesion is completely perpendicular. Uh, therefore, I would like to use viscous agent, which is sodium arginate. Uh, at least at the bottom of the target lesion here, it becomes quite difficult to open the submucosal space. And carefully insert the needle tip to the submucosal layer and lift up a little bit and inject. Okay, stop it. Then push for the endoscope. Now we can see this nice submucosal layer here. I usually make viscous agent a little bit dark blue color to visualize the submucosal layer much better. Carefully catch the submucosal layer and control my wrist to the right side. Still, maneuverability of the endoscope is very poor, but carefully catch the target tissue and gently control the wrist. This is the right side edge by hooking here and moving toward the safe side. This is left side edge by hooking the edge of the remaining tissue, I can widely open the sudden causal space. This is almost the end of the resection. Now we can see the border here. Okay, this is the final touch to get. Okay, it's finished. Now my assistant is tying 4-0 surgical nylon string uh, to the end of uh, reloadable Olympus end clip. Now it's ready to use. This is resection bed. As you can see now, uh, there is no muscle injury at all. And I already coagulated exposed the blood vessel. And as you can see here, we can see the movement of the outside through the muscle layer. That means muscle layer of the duodenum is quite thin. Uh, therefore, it's mandatory to close every large defect after ESD procedure in the duodenum to avoid serious complications such as delayed bleeding and perforation. Now, I'm going to uh, close this large defect using string clip suturing method, which I originally developed a few years ago. Okay, open it, please. Now I introduced a uh, clip and line. My assistant, Mr. Sasaki, already make a knot on the tip, metallic tip of the Orimpas reloadable end clip. Okay. And Hooking the line to my fifth finger and approach to the inner side. And it is very important to capture both mucosa edge and part of the muscle layer together. Otherwise, it becomes very superficial suturing. Okay. I intentionally captured the part of the muscle layer and suck the air to make. Uh, muscle layer relax and slowly, slowly close the end of it. Okay. Now first clip is deployed and anchored at the inner side. Then introduce the second end of clip and catch the line with the tip of the metallic clip and anchor it at the oral side. And again, it is mandatory to capture the part of the muscle layer and surrounding mucosa together and suck air 
and the crows very carefully, okay? Now string is anchored on both a now and oral side. Now I'm introducing third end the grip, which is right-sized Olympus reloadable end the grip. Okay, open. And open it carefully, just beside the previous end the grip. And catch the colder edge at the oral side. And gently pull the string and suck air a little bit and fire it. Okay. Now inner edge is co completely closed and prepare a false end clip. I'm going to approach at the right side, then catch the mucosal edge and rotate the end clip a little bit. Okay, that's perfect. And again, pull back string a little bit and suck air, okay, fire. Okay, that's perfect. Now the large defect almost closed. This is Olympus scissor. By hooking the string and push forward, then cut it, okay. I would like to give additional end clip to close the defect completely. This is the final result of my procedure. The large defect was completely closed and there is no uh, bleeding. And of course, because the defect was completely closed. This is a resected specimen. The size of the resected specimen was relatively big, uh, 45 by uh, 25. And in order to check the border of the uh, lesion, I would like to uh, spray indigo carmine. This is the oral edge, and this is the anal edge. The margin is completely free from the tumor. And this is four centimeter size. I believe this is mucosal cancer. Actually, this was a mucosal cancer, and of course, margin was completely free from the tumor. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Professor Yahagi. This was a very nice demonstration of a difficult procedure. It's uh, impressive uh, um, from start to finish. And uh, I wanted to open now the session for discussion. And uh, I wanted uh, to uh, um, uh, start uh, with you, Professor Yahagi. Uh, I noticed that in the previous video, uh, a white type of suture was used and you use a blue suture. Uh, do you think that it matters because it seems like a more slick suture should be easier to approximate? Uh, can you make a comment on that? Yes. Uh, previously, I often use uh, End the loop uh, to approximate the large opening uh, within the narrow lumen of the duodenum. But because of the rigid nature of the end loop, it's sometimes very difficult uh, to uh, approximate the opening. And also, uh, my new technique, which is uh, string uh, clip suturing method, is more flexible and uh, we can. Uh, e much easily approximate a large opening and uh, we can give additional uh, a, a string and clip if it is necessary, depending on the size of the target lesion. And the uh, clipping uh, to the target lesion is much easier with my new technique because of the flexibility of the string and uh, end clip. Uh, that's the reason why I completely switched to my new technique from my previous technique. Thank you very much. Uh, to follow up on that question, uh, uh, Dr. Maheta, uh, could you please tell us what type of uh, suture or dental floss you were using uh, for, um, uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Ka uh, uh, Kato, uh, what type of uh, suture you were using uh, for your closure? Uh, you mean the kind of the sling? Yes. Uh, uh, 
we all used to use the uh, silk, but uh, recently we changed the nylon, nylon string. Uh, it's uh, thin and uh, uh, not uh, disturb the uh, clip. Uh, so sometimes uh, we use and enter the clip. It uh, not, not, uh, 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 so disturbs the smooth disturb passage the smooth, of the yeah. additional end clip. Yeah. Uh, because of the friction. Friction, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, so back to Dr. Maheta, could you please uh, uh, advise us when you're doing the water pressure method, obviously you're cutting underwater. So two details, if you can elaborate. One is for irrigation, do you use water or normal saline? And secondly, do you change the settings of your generator compared to your usual settings for ESD because you're working underwater? Thank you for your question. So first, uh, uh, your first question is uh, so the material bra, uh, immersion uh, solution is uh, uh, we always use uh, a normal saline. Yeah. And the second question, uh, the uh, generator setting is uh, the same settings as a uh, conventional ESD. Thank you, because uh, uh, I, I have tried underwater poem. I have not tried water pressure ESD. And for underwater poem, uh, you have to change the settings because otherwise it will not cut. That said, I was using endo cut rather than dry cut, and that may be the difference. Uh, so um, I like this idea of using dry cut uh, for the mucosal uh, incision. So this is a very uh, important uh, uh, tip. Uh, uh, may I give additional comment regarding this topic? Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, because it is very important to have some electrolyte uh, to uh, transmit electric cu current to the target tissue. That's why it is really uh, necessary to use normal saline. And under normal saline condition, we don't have to change the setting of electric current when we use uh, dual knife J. Uh, because the uh, metallic part of dual knife is just 1.5 millimeter, which is very short length. But in case of using much longer electrode, uh, such as hook knife or TT knife, uh, which has nearly three millimeter or sometimes four millimeter knife lens, uh, it requires much higher electric current. That's why uh, you cannot cut well uh, using the same uh, electric setting then you should uh, switch to a much high, uh, powerful uh, uh, electric current such as end cut or increase the maximum effect of the uh, cutting mode. Uh, but by using short electrodes such as dual knife J, uh, we don't have to change our settings. It makes perfect sense. Uh, thank you for your elegant explanation. Uh, Professor, may I have a, a comment on this topic? Of course. Uh, so, and uh, we, du during the uh, dissection, the coagulation current sometimes make a bubble due to the heat. So if there is uh, no vessel, I prefer to use uh, cutting current, including dry cut or end cut eye. And, but uh, if we, uh, injure the vessel, uh, it's getting very worse uh, because the blood spread very quickly and uh, we, we can't see anything. So we should carefully uh, pre-coagulate the vessel, but uh, cutting current is very useful to uh, in the underwater situation. Fantastic, uh, because indeed this is a big problem. If you're working underwater and you get the bleeding, you lose visibility and that creates a problem. Uh, in our institution, we still use EMR in the colon in particular. And one of the techniques that we use is underwater EMR. Um, and any bleeding makes the procedure very difficult and you have to suction all the fluid until you control the bleeding. The problem with EMR is that you have 
uh, no, uh, no control over what you're cutting with the snare. You just cut and then you have a bleeding. With ESD, which is much more elegant technique, uh, you should very carefully, preemptively coagulate uh, all the vessels. Um, and that is a great uh, tip that uh, uh, makes uh, for much more efficient procedure. Thank you for adding that because uh, uh, it is very important. Well, gentlemen, uh, I uh, think we had a very good session to say the least uh, with uh, some very practical tips and tricks that uh, endoscopists can take home and utilize. And I wanna thank you for your participation. Thank you very much for moderating this uh, wonderful session. And I really want to uh, meet you in uh, person in the near future after uh, terminating uh, COVID-19 in the near future. Absolutely. Uh, as good as this is, there is no substitute for us meeting in person. And I very much hope that this will be soon. Uh, good luck, gentlemen. Stay healthy. Take care of yourself and your family during these tough times. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.